Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth be Good morning and a warm welcome as we meet once again to worship God, to draw encouragement from God's presence and to feed on His Word. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory, as once you re redeemed your people from Egypt, and led them to freedom in the promised land. So now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day that you have made and praise your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, Blessed be God forever. Amen. 
let's spend a few minutes in quiet and be mindful of ourselves our own failures and shortcomings as we look and seek the face of a holy God let us pray and ask God to touch and to transform us Change my heart, O oh God, may it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God, may I be like you. You are the potter, I am. Mold me and make me, this is what I pray. Change my heart, O oh God, may it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God, may I be like you. The scripture says if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just. And he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May the God of love, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring us his pardon and peace, now and forever. Amen. May we, a forgiven people, respond to God even as we respond as praising his name to god be the glory great things he hath done so loved he the world that he gave us his son who yielded his life and atonement for sin and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear His voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give Him the glory great things he had done. The first reading is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 7, reading from verses 55 to 60. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed steadily into heaven and saw the glory of God. And he saw Jesus standing in the place of honor at God's right hand. And he told them, Look, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man standing in the place of honour at God's right hand. Then they put their hands over their ears and began shouting. They rushed at him and dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. His accusers took off their coats and laid them at the feet of a young man named Saul. As they stoned him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. He fell to his knees shouting, Lord, don't charge them with this sin. 
and with that he died. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is taken from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 14, reading from verses 1 to 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to, said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am, the, I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own. But the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's be quiet for a while. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, O oh, my soul. Rejoice, take joy, my King. In what you hear, let me be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. St. John's Gospel, chapter 14 and verse 6, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. When their four-year-old son fell to his death from the window of their apartment on the 53rd floor, Eric Clapton, arguably the greatest living rock music guitarist wrote a song of what the whole experience did to him. The whole experience had transformed him and made his music softer, more powerful and even more reflective. In the second reading we heard read to us this morning, we hear of Jesus who had just completed the Passover meal with his disciples, washed the disciples' feet in an act of servanthood, foretold his betrayal in the backdrop 
of his predicting Peter's denial, now talking to them about his impending departure. But he does not fail to add these words of hope as we read in verse 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. Thomas's confusion about not having any idea where Jesus was going is one we may not share in, because with history on our side, we know of what happened. <coughs> However, with history on our side, the question of wanting to know if Jesus is the way is still one that burdens in the hearts of many. Today, if we look for that way, I wonder where you and I would be looking. In St. John's Gospel, chapter 5, verse 39 and 40, Jesus tells his disciples, You diligently study the scriptures because you think that by them you possess eternal life. These are the scriptures that testify about me, yet you refuse to come to me to have life. We also hear in the same reading and in that same conversation between Jesus and his disciples, Thomas asking the question, how can we know the way? This question reveals the struggle that many go through. Responding to that, Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. While most of us who read this text in isolation may think that this is a very exclusive and arrogant statement, I think we need to think twice about that conclusion. This response that is made here is the sixth of Jesus' I am sayings, where he says that he is on his way back to the Father. He is on his way back to the Father and he is back to, to the Father's, going back to the Father's presence. And it is in him that they see an adequate revelation of God. Therefore, Jesus becomes the embodiment of God's truth and grace to all believers as he becomes their way back to God. God's people, who always long to walk in the way of life, find that direction for that very purpose in God's incarnation, Jesus Christ. And as the people of God, if we want to find that way to heaven, God's revelation to us in Jesus tells us, therefore then, where we need to look, because He is the way. And we need to know his, this truth with conviction as people of the baptized community. Jesus also tells His disciples, if you really know me, you would know my father as well. Verse 7. And again he says these words. These words I say to you are just not of my own. In other words, it is the father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of what is being seen in the miracles. 
lecturing to a group of students at Princeton University. Karl Barth, easily one of the most the famous theologians of the 20th century, was asked by one of his students a question that has probably crossed the minds of many of us as well. Sir, said the student, don't you think that God has revealed himself in any other religions and not only Christianity? Bart's response to that student stunned the entire class. No, he said, God has not revealed himself in any religion, including Christianity. He has revealed himself in his son, Jesus of Nazareth. This, in a sense, is the scandal of our faith. And it is a claim made by Jesus, which is a stumbling block to many. We are called not to believe in a religion, nor follow the teachings of a religion. But we are called into a relationship to believe in a person, a living person called Jesus. In baptism, another of the many isms of our life, we begin a journey, a way of life, and a way of life in Christ. And when we are serious about Jesus and the community that we are all a part of, then the community that we are a part of begins to demonstrate the characteristics and Christ-like qualities that we read and discover in the life of the early church. Last week, one of our readings was the second letter of the Acts of the Apostles from verse 42 to verse 47 very familiar passage from where we derive lessons of what the community the first community was like and these are very important lessons of immense value not just to learn and discuss and marvel about but if we want to see social transformation both in life the smaller community and the large then this needs to be revisited and thought about seriously. See for yourself what life was like within the first church or the early church. Even though they were a community that was intentionally persecuted many a time. They met together, they devoted themselves to the teaching, to the apostles' teaching. That is reliable, solid teaching that edified and educated the community. It held them together. And through it all the teaching helped people become serious about living what they believed. This is very unlike some of the fanciful contemporary teachings that we hear marketed in many places. People took delight in what they learned. There was devotion to what they believed. And their faith was not confused, neither was it diluted. It did not have an adverse or negative impact on the life of the early church community, but it built it up. And there was a tremendous sense of community as we look and learn from the scriptures. Where caring and sharing came naturally, opposed to being asked for or requested from. That was the mentality of the early church. They worshipped together. They were not fighting each other or they were not fighting with their community leaders. They listened. And if they had issues, and I'm sure they had, they resolved their problems in a very challenging manner. Acts chapter 6 we will discover how they sat together, discussed their problems, and they resolved it. And what happened? There was growth. There was both qualitative and quantitative growth within the community. People were serious about what they were believing. It was not fanciful words or meaningless empty acts or rituals, but they walked 
the talk or they lived what they believed and the community grew and it did not shrink think about the claims of jesus in the second reading we heard he tells his disciples i am in the father and the father is in me he tells them whoever has seen me has seen the father and then he tells them i am the way and the truth and the life and there is something special about this person jesus them them something really special that makes him either the greatest liar the world has ever seen or it makes him indeed truly the savior of the world i am the way the truth and the life and no one comes to the father but by me we spend a lot of time apologizing for this statement of jesus we try to reassure our friends and those in the wider family who may not share our beliefs that god is loving and kind and that what is important is that we love one another my friends our friends know that but you know what causes the confusion they don't see us reciprocating love towards each other as a people who love jesus who believe in him and to whom Jesus is Lord our task therefore is to share Jesus and the hope that we and the joy and the love and the peace that we found in him and there's nothing to be sorry about in that message nothing to apologize for the people in the roman empire who became followers of Jesus for nearly 2 or 3 decades were not initially called christians but followers of the, of the way and the people who followed what appeared to be this very strange way of life were called christians for the first time when we read acts chapter 11 verse 26 at antioch peter describes this peculiar group of people who were following the way in his letter to the churches and i reiterate what he says are marks and characteristics of this people despite being at the end of cruel persecution he tells them in first peter chapter 2 verse 10 you are a chosen race a royal priesthood a holy nation god's own people in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light once you were not a people but now you are god's people once you had not received mercy but now you have received mercy all of us have experienced god's mercy in our life and that has brought us from that sense of alienation from loneliness and guilt to a new life in which we know god to be more than a part of our life where we become part of this great and wonderful family a family different from many other families share this same jesus with others in our words and our deeds introduce him to people that they may discover him to be the way that we have found him to be not by apologizing to them because jesus claimed to be the way the truth and the life the person of jesus is one to be shared not to be hidden for fear that we might somehow be offending others or we might somehow be judging others like eric clapton many of us today perhaps would agree that hardships and challenges we encounter in life have a way of getting our attention and making us rethink about rethink life very much like the present global health crisis continues to make us rethink and ask serious questions about life pain slows us down and if we don't learn from it we will come out without changing and within a short time again we will soon be finding that the same things are hurting us all over again 
Jesus in this discussion was preparing his disciples for life ahead when he was not going to be with them physically. Today as people who believe in Jesus, as people of the way or people on a journey, our task is to help people discover that way by pointing people to Jesus and not judging them. We are called to pray for others as well for ourselves so that God will forgive us our sins and bring us all to that dwelling place that Christ himself has gone ahead to prepare for us. Therefore then today, if we are looking for that way, then the scripture tells us that Jesus is that way. And if we have not, and if we have made that discovery, then why not share him with others? Why not let him be known? May God's grace continue to empower us as we walk in the way of Christ, our servant King. Amen. You understand everything about it. We come to you seeking your help. 
give us new ways of looking at this situation. Give us insights into the changes that need to take place. Show us how to get from where we are to where we need to be. Help each of us to seek love and cooperation. Show us how to make sure that each of us feels understood and cared for. Bring unity to us. May we, who are merely inconvenienced, remember those whose lives are at stake. May we, who are least exposed to risk factors, remember those most vulnerable. As fear grips our world, let us choose love. During this time, when we cannot physically wrap our arms around each other, let us yet find ways to be the loving embrace of our God to our neighbor. Lord, hear our prayer. Let our prayer come unto you. Father, we pray for those who have been severely affected by the current economic situation, for the daily wage earners with no source of income, for the low paid and those struggling to make ends meet, for the unemployed and those threatened with redundancy, for small businesses and cottage industries, and for the tourism, hospitality and garment industries, where hundreds of thousands of employees and their dependents are facing severe hardship. For business leaders making difficult decisions that affect the lives of their employees. God, give these women and men wisdom and help them to lead self-sacrificially. For workers in a variety of other industries facing layoffs and financial hardship, may we all work together to strengthen the weak and empower the powerless. God, keep them from despair and inspire your church and our communities to generously support them. Lord, hear our prayer. Let our pride come unto you. Lord, we pray for our church. Give our leaders wisdom as they journey with and encourage your people. Give them the clarity to see the needs of the people. Allow your spirit to guide them and to speak through them as they offer hope and point their flock to you. Show them ways to keep the body of our church connected during this time. We praise you and are thankful that we live in a time with technology that allows us to stay connected. Yet we know how many of your people still feel isolated and alone. Lord, give us eyes to see their needs. We ask that you equip your people to offer hope during this time, not panic. We pray that you would use your church to advance your kingdom, to be examples of your great love. For Christians in every neighborhood, community and city, may your Holy Spirit in inspire us to pray, to give, to love, to serve and to proclaim the gospel that the name of Jesus Christ might be glorified around the world. Lord, hear our prayer. Let our prayer grant you. Hasten, O Father, the coming of thy kingdom, and grant that we, thy servants, who now live by faith, may with joy behold thy Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator. Amen. Come, Come Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Let us continue to be in prayer. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. Sustain and support the anxious. Be with those who care for the sick and lift up all who are brought low, that we may find comfort knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Eternal God, your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, is the way the truth and the life for all creation. Grant us grace to walk in Christ's way, to rejoice in Christ's truth, and to share in Christ's risen life, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. O God, the author of peace and the lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your servants, from all assaults of our enemies, that we may trust in your defense and not fear the power of adversaries. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you that you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into any kind of danger. Order us in all your our doings and guide us to do what is right in your eyes. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Rejoice in God's new creation as our Savior taught us. So we pray. Our Father, 
who art in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as you forgive those who sin against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen the lord bless you and keep you the lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you the lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace amen 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 may the risen christ grant us the joys of eternal life amen let us bless the lord thanks be to god